Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin. Uh, we got a special today at a seven o'clock on a Wednesday. This never happens. I'm gonna be going live with Dylan Chase. Um, he was at the Dove Awards. He was actually flown to the flown to the Dove Awards, um, performed a song, did everything, and then when that footage aired, they cut his part completely out. Um, he'll explain that much better when he gets on, but it's been a recurring theme of every year, CHH um, getting, getting cut or snubbed at the Dove Awards. Um, it just really seems like something happens every year, sometimes multiple things. So we're going to talk to Dylan Chase about it. Hey. hey. What's up, Justin? What's up? Oh, man, I feel like I'm calling in to, to a radio show. Well, you know, like in a, case the Dove, in case TBN tunes in, I got to look professional, you know what I mean, if we're going to fix this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I very non-eloquently described what actually happened to you. So hopefully you can actually say everything that happened. Well, everyone tuning in, this is Dylan Chase, obviously. What's up? And uh, Dylan Chase has been an indie rapper extraordinaire for yeah. many, many years and got this awesome opportunity and finally <laughs> with with the it's a group right it's like switch. a worship group yeah mm -hmm. with switch uh for their song symphony uh, and dylan did a feature on it and they got to perform at the dove awards or tape something for the dove awards yes. because of covid and you were flown out the whole nine yards and then when it aired you went y'all and then they cut they cut hey. the whole thing i was thinking about doing all right everyone that was dylan chase and then just, just ending the stream you know on the youtube video they at least left in my ad lib which is like some people thought i said y'all i get it because i am from oklahoma but it was actually like a good old hip-hop like hardy yeah like a y-a-h-h -H. And on the live well, stream, it was cut though, so quick, right? You couldn't even uh, really tell what it was on the actual airing of it, though. It didn't even get that far. <laughs> like you didn't wow. even see me go on stage. So, yeah. Do you want me just to kind of dive into to it right now? Yeah, di yeah. Dive into that. I guess first, first of all, how how did you get involved with Switch, and how did that whole song come about? Just to provide a little bit yeah. of background. Man, the song has been a huge blessing. And it happened very organically. I think most people would say I was just very lucky. But with a Christian worldview, we kind of don't really leave room for luck. We're like, this was part of God's, you know, plan, like his providence. Yeah. So I'll be, I'll try to give a super brief summary because it was a relationship that was built over like five years. Mm -hmm. And I would just tell all the young, hungry indie artists is never despised any type of humble beginning or humble start because like humble starts and humble finishes. That's, that's what we want. So there's this church in Oklahoma called life church and they're a multi-site church. And some people are even more familiar with Craig Rochelle. He's the uh, head pastor. So, I mean, just a super influential global type of church. Well, I had a relationship with a guy who became a worship pastor at one of their smaller campuses and he asked me to be a part of their Easter service in 2015. And I spoken word piece I wrote went so well that some of the higher ups that are decision makers in Life Church, guys who are over the YouVersion app, I don't, you may not know, YouVersion is put out by Life Church. Okay. They come and watch me perform because I think there was like eight services that weekend. And then that's 2015. Well, then that leads to a baby step to another opportunity. And then 2016, they had me write a rap, an actual rap, not a spoken word for one of Craig Rochelle's sermon series called How to Neighbor. That went really well. Well, then there's this trend, like, I feel like Hillsong and Jesus Culture were kind of some of the first, like, churches to start putting out worship bands. And so Life Church started doing that with their worship. And then they took it a step further and they started putting out music under a collective called Switch for their student ministry. That's the name of their, yeah. for like, to take it to like a, a low level, that's like the name of their youth group, right? But now this is a yeah. multi-site, you know, youth mm -hmm. group. Some Wednesdays they may have, goodness, I've been there sometimes. There have been like six, 700 kids at some of the campuses on a Wednesday. It's crazy. So. I'm just chilling, right? I get a phone call and this is how I approached it, Justin. It's like, 
hey, our youth worship team wants you to be on their song. So I'm like, cool. You know, like <laughs> any other youth worship team, I'm thinking it's probably like some right. like low level musicians. And then I hear the track and it was like a rough demo. I'm like, oh, this is this is cute. This is a cool track. I did my thing. I'm getting ready to leave the studio and they sit me down and they talk like splits and writer's credits. And I'm like, man, uh, y'all got to like show me the way. So th that just shows you like the integrity that they have yeah. because they knew how they, what they wanted to submit the song to radio and really push it. Like and this so is a it, serious, this is a serious yeah. thing. It's not, not just like, Hey, I'm going to show up and like record a song with some youth group yes. kids and they'll show it to their church and it'll be nice. It's, and that's kind of how I went into it, you know? And so that's why I say some people would say I was just so lucky because the song comes out and it starts picking up momentum like really fast and i think you know there's lots of different billboard charts this one's we'll call like the christian like hot christian hits or i can't mm. remember the name of the chart but it was number one for 13 weeks um i think it's on track to become a gold record probably by early wow. next year um so man huge opportunity uh we really thought that the song would get nominated for the dove awards last year because it came out like February 2019 and it didn't and we were bummed and I kind of just gave up on it I thought you know I've seen some artists get to do things at Dove Awards and even though it's kind of normally awkward words yeah um I'm like I turned 35 this year I'm like better late than never and then I get <laughs> the phone call and they say hey what are you doing on Tuesday I'm like um, I'm supposed to be in Alaska. Like we had this whole trip that was supposed to happen. It was wow. some ministry stuff involved. And then it got um, canceled because of COVID and we pushed it back to the fall. And so I'm like, yeah, I, I can't make it. And they're like, no, man, like you got to be there. I'm like, dude, I got like me and, and most of my family are supposed to be flying to Alaska. So I said, let me talk to my wife. And I talked to my wife. And she's like, oh, like, you know, my wife l listens to K-Love and all that stuff. So she's pretty much a soccer mom. So she's like, oh, the Dove Awards, you got to be there. So I, like, moved my entire trip, had to get rescheduled and do all these things to fly to the Dove Awards. And so that's how we end up being at the Dove Awards. And we're nominated. I think uh, they were nominated for New Artist of the Year or, or like, Best New Artist. Mm -hmm. And man, because Switch and Life Church rock with me so hard, they could have performed some of their other songs, but they're like, no, we want to do symphony and we want to do whatever it takes to make sure Dylan gets there. I'm talking like, I think switching all my flights was really expensive and they covered all of that. Wow. They covered all of my expenses. They covered my flight, my hotel, all that was covered by Life Church. So some questions were like, who did, was it the Dove Awards or was it Switch? And from what everyone's told me, because uh, my phone blew, started blowing up, they were completely surprised. They were frustrated. I don't even think it's as good of a look for them because they never even let the song like get to its climax. It just feels kind of forgettable when you watch the performance because the song never really goes anywhere. It's like a half, right? They kind of yeah. cut it in half. Yeah, they 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 kept the first two verses. Uh, of the song and then they actually my part's more of like a bridge and that's the part the bridge and the last hook when the and song then like really that big off, that big they chorus could, and they could have cut it so many ways so here's the thing when i was there everyone was so nice i i was surprised that they i'm thinking like one switch is already like small compared to the other artists at the dubs they're they're, they're rookies you know and mm -hmm. they're actually like the director saw me and he's like hey you're the rapper. I'm like, oh, they know I'm the rapper. They're like, and you are the big moment of the song. So we want to have this dramatic entrance for you. And I mean, they had like this little light runway path that I walked up on to get to the stage. Like it was thought out. So, and we recorded it. Like we sound checked and did a full run through like two to three times. Then we actually recorded it two to three times, you know, because it wasn't a live show. So yeah. it was allowing them to change stuff and, and coach us. And so it was like a music video pretty much basically they're like we want this to feel like a music video or a music documentary but there was this like when i got there i thought i know how this has gone down and there's a chance like they won't air my part but then how i was treated 
how many times we did the take. I'm thinking, no, like, why would they go through all this and then just cut it? But for them, not only was Symphony a small portion of their award show, but my rap part is even like a little fraction of the award show. And it, I can't speak as to why they did it. It's hard not to assume, but what really like got me was that they posted it to YouTube, which that has the potential to reach more people than the show airing. Yeah. And they still like cut me off, even on the version that went on YouTube. And that's what I want. Like, I would love for them just to like, let me see, like, let not just me, but let the fans of the music and everyone else see like the full experience of performing that song. So there's no version of what you did. Like, there's no complete version out there yeah. as far as you know. Man, I just have, like, I had some cell phone footage that a guy got who was there. I'm like, yo, can I, Can you send me that? Because that's, like, the only uh, token that I have to be like, man, I got to be at the Dove Awards. Yeah, like, you have no proof. Like, <laughs> you got to, no like, proof. freeze frame yeah. the video. Like, see that yeah. silhouette? And the guy Dude. with the microphone, that's me. Yes, totally. It's like, ah, oh, man. I'm so glad, Justin, that I was busy that night. Cause I'm saying like, I was super excited. I, I was ready to have like a, like a watch party. Like, Oh, they bring over all my friends yeah. and family and church. Like, all right, guys, uh, kids be quiet. Like here I come watch. Yeah. And then gone. So thankfully I was doing something else. I had like, I was helping a church with the outreach and I get off stage and the singer from the song texts me what on earth. And I'm like, huh? Like, is there ever a good time to use what on earth? And it's like speaking to something that's good. I'm like, (laughs) it sounds bad. So I start texting and then the, one of the other songwriters, the people who kind of oversee some of the management, they're like, Hey, we are so sorry. We are totally shocked and we're making phone calls and we're going to get answers, but I haven't heard anything yet. So there are no answers. As no, I have no, yeah, as to why. And like, man, shout out to Rapzilla, shout out to On Beat Music and a lot of other people who raised awareness about it because, mm-hmm. man, like, I know they've seen that people are frustrated with them. And if they've had, there's no way they didn't see any of those tweets. Yeah, um, there's just, no way. There's, there's no way. It, there was plenty of traction. It's not and, like the it's not like it's a huge Twitter page either. Yeah. The last I checked, because people were like showing me the comments they were dropping on the YouTube video. Yeah. Where's Dylan? Why'd you cut Dylan out? But when I went to watch the YouTube video, I can't find those comments. I don't know. Maybe I just couldn't find them or maybe they're removing those comments. Well, wasn't there a clip of it on Twitter? Like did they upload an actual the actual footage uh, onto Twitter? Was, no, I think it was just the YouTube like thumbnail. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I yeah. must have watched it initially in Twitter, in, like in the app. Yeah. The YouTube video playing through Twitter, and it looks that, cool. That's what like, I thought at first. I thought they did a really good job capturing that. The lighting was cool. Like all the musicians were all in hitting it, and I was just like, "Oh, this probably would have looked so dope." Like the way to have me come on stage and and the music, the live re- rendition of it is different than the radio version. Like they added some extra little drum fills and some breakdowns. Mm-hmm. It sounds super cool. Yeah. Cause we're supposed to give you that live, you know, that's a special, yeah. special, special thing. Yeah. And so, man, I don't know if I should keep the Dove Awards on the bucket list. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever get that close again to literally record and do it and be flown out and then it doesn't get shown. But thankfully this happened to me now. I think if this was during my like, trying to climb up I probably would have been so discouraged I probably would have Mm -hmm. really just made a bunch of bitter music after that point but thankfully like I see the horizon like I see that I'll be coming to an end with the music thing within the next three or five years and it's like it's okay you know what I mean no double words diss track in in your your future at at 30 at 35 maybe at 25 yeah 25 totally (laughs) I would have got a ward to help me yeah, you could have had a whole like die daily cipher. Oh gosh, totally. We come to New <laughs> oh, York oh, post COVID to film it. Obi would have made the beat for you. You guys, you guys oh, would have man. been set. I could see the video in my head, but you know that's like the hip hop way to want to respond. I don't. Here's the thing. 
I, I saw one comment that was on the, fa they posted the video straight to Facebook. And through that, I came across this comment from a lady who says she came across the song when she was in prison and the wow. rap and the rap portion is what really ministered to, to her and like spoke to her. So from a ministry aspect, I just want the TBN, the Dove Awards to like catch up to say, hey, if y'all are about reaching people, like this is a way to reach people that y'all aren't doing the best job at. And there's artists other than me, there's tons of artists that are doing a great job. And I know for me growing up like in a really rough environment growing up, like hip hop is what really spoke to my pain. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think especially as Christian hip hop, we can speak to that pain, but also bring a solution. And they just don't, it's just, they don't value it. They do not value it because at the end of the day, it's a business and it's about what brings in the most money. And up until someone like an NF or, you know, it's been like the most successful Christian hip hop artist is, is nothing compared to some of like the money that these artists generate, like, newsboys or i don't i mean i don't keep up with all the latest so that's kind of dated but whoever the biggest cc no, news, is but newsboys are still super relevant they've still, been relevant man. for 30 years which 30. is insane They're, three yeah. different singers um so i mean now, for them it's like no one's gonna care that we cut dylan chase's part off you know but it's like man like we care though it's been really cool to see <laughs> yeah. the, the christian hip-hop community care about this and it's really made me feel like so much brotherhood and, and sisterhood with my other people involved in CHH. But like, man, we're all in this together. A L for me is a L for everyone, which means a W for one guy is a W for all of us. I think that's why it, it hurts the way it does. Yeah. Well, at least, you know, it wasn't on your dime, right? Like they, yes. they took care of everything like that. That would have yeah. made it. That would have made oh, it even man. worse. I would have, I would have made a diss track. Yeah, because I would totally, I would have totally made that. Yeah, I would have made that investment because I'm like, man, like this is a worthy investment to have this opportunity. Yeah. But thankfully, Life Church, like they took care, they took care of it, and shout out to them. You know what I mean? So, are they also cutting your part out when the song gets played on the radio too? You know, I assume That's, so. I saw somebody comment that. Um, Air One and K Love they don't play the rap part. So I assumed that was just them doing that. But I had a lot of people back when that was happening last year, last summer, 2019, um, a lot of people tweeted them. And one guy actually got a response. And they said, Air One said, we played the version of the song we were sent. So I think that was probably not a switch decision, not a life church decision, because that's their church. I think that was their label to say, we need a little, we need a little more, uh, like K love friendly version of this song. So we'll submit this song to these stations, but to these other stations, we'll keep the rap part in there. Yeah. Well, here's the thing too, with radio platforms, like there's a consistency there, right? So like, if they're not playing anybody's rap, they're not going to play your, your part. Yeah. And then you could be okay with that. because Okay. That's their format. But the Dove Awards is everything. Yes. Like they have a hip hop award, two of them. Yeah. So that should tell you that hip hop should be allowed. There's a rock, you know, there's there's rock awards, there's yeah. gospel awards, they have awards for books. Like so like anything get an award. Any anything goes. It's not like their formats like, oh, we can only play CCM or worship music. Hip hop is allowed there. So that's why this is kind of um, inexcusable and it seems like every year there's it's always something. like some sort of incident or whatever where everyone's like yo i'm tired of this oh don't worry we're gonna do better and then something else happens and yeah. like i know in the grand scheme of things it's like people probably like oh it's not that big of a deal like the song was just cut but it's like it keeps happening yeah just it's to like the, the bigger, same it's like section of, the of people the same community yeah a longer track record it's not just this it's just years and then what's right. crazy justin is when i approached this song i i wrote it in a very ccm way so i'm saying it is the most yeah. safest like easily understandable soccer mom friendly type of rap and still they don't want it so it's really like challenged me to say 
be yourself as an artist because even when you try to polish it and make and like be accepted by okay. this industry they still don't want you they still don't want it you know what i mean so the one thing you didn't have was like your kids in the background and you holding I one know. of them. Look I know. I need this. to be I'm holding a, a kid. I'm, I'm a, a family dad. man, rapper, a dad. Like, you can play me. I'm safe. I yeah. can, you but, can hey, do this. Toby Mac, man, he, he's in it. So if it's a Toby Mac rap, they'll play it. Yeah. Every time. Well, I mean, if, if, it's, if it's a Lecrae rap, they would play it, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. I think there's certain artists who are able to, that's a huge barrier to break through. But it, Again, I think the breakthrough has to do with money. You know what I mean? Like the label. Like yeah, the, the label. The yeah, machine having behind the machine. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can't say though, at least I don't know who made the decision. It wasn't a live show. So it's like, if it was a time constraint, surely they could have found another way. And then if it was a time constraint, they could have still put the full version on YouTube. But everyone was nice to me when I was there. You know what I mean? Um, it's like the song symphony really speaks to our suffering and and how we should respond to our anxiety and suffering. And I think TBN has maybe not just done a poor job, but maybe been a little out of balance when it comes to like helping people cope with suffering. And I thought, man, this was such a good opportunity to speak to that through this song. And some of the other songwriters messaged me and they're like, you like you make the song make sense like your part because you have because it's rap and you can fit so many more phrases like your song is really what makes the whole title symphony work your portion of the song and that's the that's the part that they took out so it's just like man no matter like how hard uh i may have tried for some reason it's just like they don't hear it they just don't get it It, well and and to your point, like that's why you're on the bridge. That bridge is exactly, sectioning yeah. those two parts of the song together. That's like completing the the circuit of the narrative of that song. So like the bridge is usually the most anytime like a song has a bridge and it's like vastly different and like a dynamic sound, that's like the coolest part of the song. You don't cut the bridge, like cut a verse. Cut a but, chorus. And- Cut yeah, they could have easily yeah. cut a verse or chorus because there's like 20 camera angles and I know how all that works. All you got to do is like go in on the keys player and then boom, you skip over the verse and when it cuts back to the the stage, you have me doing the rap. But I mean, they didn't want the rap. Um, I still got to say it's still a win that I got to be on the song Symphony. Like it's provided some cool opportunities. It's provided financially for me. Um but the Devil Wars would have been a cool thing, but now I know that it's all smoke and mirrors and don't believe the hype. <laughs> Steven Johnson on Twitter, as a former lighting director for Life Church, I remember hearing the song for the first time and loved it. My question is, do you feel like there's a place for hip hop in the church sanctuary? It broke my heart when they cut your verse. Um, wait, it broke my heart when they cut his verse when they played it during service. Oh, so that's interesting. So they cut your verse during their church service too. Yeah, well, I think I've, and one man, don't be heartbroken. It's all right. Um, I think, I don't think, I know that I've done that song at like a few different life church campuses. Mm -hmm. So this is a, this is like off topic, but it's related. I wrote that song like, intentionally like really intricate so that if the church ever wanted to do it they weren't going to be able to find a volunteer at the church that could easily handle that verse right. you know what i mean like i'm like let me get super technical right here and that way if a church wants to do it they're probably going to call me and it'll be great opportunity so yeah i think when they cut it uh at the church it's, it's just, just cause because you're not there i'm not there yeah i don't now i'm not huge like oh hip hop needs to be uh, in worship service. I don't think hip hop is the best medium for worship just because it's hard to do it together. You know what I mean? Like it's hard to sing together a hip hop song, but in some context and some areas, I think it's totally fine because it's just another expression. 
now like when i'm in rural oklahoma am i trying to like force hip-hop into the worship service i'm like no because it doesn't fit and, and that's okay but i think um yeah i think the reason why i haven't been there I, when they cut it at church is probably because i'm not actually there to do it yeah that's that's probably more of the the simple answer <laughs> the double wards i did not think they were lame I thought they were a little extra and out of touch, which is actually why I was more preferred not the glitz and glam red carpet vibe because like that mm -hmm. would made me feel uncomfortable. I kind of liked the low key vibe. Every artist went in and because of COVID, no artists mm -hmm. were ever there at the same time. And yeah. everyone, they were so nice. Like the director like was like, yeah, man, I want you to come up and like really bring that hip hop energy. I'm like, wow, they're like, they care like they're not just like go do your part it's like they either i don't think they knew they were going to cut it at that point so i don't know where that decision came into play yeah, it might have just been a last a last yeah. minute thing but again it doesn't make sense that it's cut on youtube it doesn't hey justin i was like insecure i thought what if i just really was off that day we have off days what if i was just but i went back because i performed that song like a hundred times and I watched some of the behind the scenes footage and I was like, no, like it's fire. Like I did as best as I could do. So yeah. Would I go back to the Dove Awards? Um, man, I would try again. I don't think I'll ever will get to go back, but I mean, it's never hurts to try. I don't know. As, don't long, as long as they're flying you in, anything. right. Exactly. As long as they're flying you in, right. You have yeah. to sign a contract though. Be like, listen, I'm only going to allow yeah. you to, a great to put idea. this out. Do you still plan on working with CCM artists after an experience like this? Well, there was um, nothing wrong about the experience, yeah. right? No, yeah, with the artists. With you know, I'm not, I think a lot of Christians who are from hip hop culture are very connected to hip hop, but there's some elements of mm -hmm. CCM that we feel connected with too, like evangelical culture. I need to do less. Like I've done some, it's funny because I've done like a handful of features because there were other artists that looked at it as a formula and they were up and coming too. And like, Hey, look how like symphony it worked. So I've probably done a little, you probably will never hear them because they didn't really like blow up, but I need to be more picky on my CCM features, but I'm okay with mm -hmm. doing it as long as it's honest. And it's not just like, not so cookie cutter. I really felt like the song symphony wasn't as cookie cutter as a lot of CCM song. Right. No, it, you're right. You said you made it and you made it that way on, on purpose. Uh, th Thomas Ian she says, when do we riot? Well, Man, whenever Hawaii yeah. opens back up and I could go there. Well, I guess I could go there with a negative COVID test. I'll pick you up. Um, and then, yeah, we'll fly out from there. It's funny <laughs> because like, I just kind of laughed and shook my head when I was like, they really cut me out because I feel like this stuff always happens to me. Like I'm always this close. Like I used to, uh, you know, record in the reach record studio and, and, and had like Lecrae on my first album and did these things. And I was like this close, uh, used to mentor and disciple Leon Bridges who went on to get signed with Columbia and, and do huge like worldwide tours This close. Got flown to the Dove Awards, like killed my part this close so that's like the summary of my whole career is this close i was always this close now would you change a thing uh man you are like a really good journalist i just want to say that right now because the way <laughs> you, you flew in on that question um no i wouldn't you know i'll say no because i like where who I am you know what I mean and I don't know if I would be who I am if it wasn't for like where I'm at and what I went through you know what I mean I think if the success would have came when I was in my early 20s I don't think I'd be who I am today and I like who I am today um I like the relationships I've built I think if I would do anything different I probably would have just put out better music early on and not been so like ready just to put everything out you know what I mean but I the overall journey, I'm not like, I don't have any regrets about those relationships and those opportunities. And it's cool to be this close. There's some people that were like only this close. I got to be this close. <laughs> you got to be close, so close you, you can touch it. Um, exactly. See, but here's the thing about, you know, putting out, you know, to your point of putting out better music, you 
probably would have never put out the better music if, if you didn't I put out yeah, if you hadn't true. put out that music either. So everything has like that that effect, like every little yes. thing along the way affected the future. Like if you say you were, you know, big and famous, maybe you don't even have uh, one of the kids that you have now exactly, because of like yeah. circumstances or or something like that. You never so know true, how your life would change. Butterfly um, effect. Yep, the butterfly effect. <laughs> Hil Hilgi music. Who am I supposed to give these hands to? All right, Hilgi, I want to see you fight. Because I, I don't know. I just feel like you would punch really fast, but it'd be like a dream, and all your punches would be like mushy and like soft. But I was going to say, does he punch wife, as fast as he raps? <laughs> yeah, I know. I think you need, like, your wife, bless you, could probably beat him up, though. No offense, Hilgi. I love you. Hilgi is like, He's my, uh, what's it called when you have like a doppel, uh... doppelganger? Yes, that's Hilgi. He's me from another universe. We have so much in common. <laughs> Do It Anyway is still a classic. You know, Do It Anyway is my Ice Ice Baby. I guess Symphony is my Ice Ice Baby. I don't know what Do It Anyway is. What was Vanilla Ice's other song? <laughs> yeah. Well, what Turtle, is uh, that? Ninja Rap. There we go. Do It ninja Anyway rap. is my Ninja Rap. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, all the other artists out there, don't despise Humble Beginnings. Never, like, all the opportunities. Yes, it's a bummer that Dove cut it out, but I still got to be a part of a really awesome song, and it's helped provide and fund other things I've done as an indie artist that I couldn't have done. And it all started with doing a spoken word at a small church for my friend who is a worship pastor. All right, man, so I'll let you give some plugs out. You, you recently dropped an album grounded yeah right? that's your that's your newest project so my 11th project man and that's not counting okay. the two eps wow yeah uh chad sorry 11th project grounded i'm really excited about it every artist is excited about it but yeah it's short and sweet it's 10 10 tracks like 32 minutes to listen to it so check it out dylan chase grounded uh, I just dropped a music video, horrible timing with all the stuff going on with the election, but I dropped a music video for my song. Sorry. Tell me it just dropped. So yeah, check that out as well. And hopefully in 2021 as things, we'll see how things turn out and maybe I'll be in a city near you doing a bootleg show, bootleg tours. I Thank appreciate you. you. I appreciate you taking the time to explain everything. If we get an update, you know, maybe we'll, you know. we'll do this. I'll, yeah, we'll do we'll this again. Or we'll, we'll follow up.